In my last video, I walked through this large 11 by 14 alpha spiral bound and shared how much I really loved working larger and how I didn't mind working across the spiral at all. I enjoy this book so much that I decided to stick with the spiral but go to a more manageable size. This is the 7 by 10. However, the spiral in this smaller size was a lot more of a barrier. And so what I want to share with you in this video is how I developed strategies for using a book that didn't really suit me. So let's get going. Starting off with my usual palette sketch uh, to start my book. This records where my palette is at and in fact there's a change since then. And so the very first day that I used this sketchbook, the challenges were already there. I found uh, this width quite restrictive, particularly after working at such a large scale in the previous book. And I had a feeling that I was going to do more uh, contained compositions. And that's what I refer to in my course sketchbook design, putting one thing after the other, often putting borders around it just because of the nature of the book and the spiral. And then the second sketch that I did on this particular day highlighted the other issue, which is really the idea of trying to uh, sketch at a size that I'm comfortable with and having to deal with the spiral, which proportionally was much bigger deal in a smaller book. And so I found this particular sketch a little bit awkward. Definitely the spiral was getting in the way. And the other thing which I talked about in the last video is the idea that for me the design of the page is as important as the sketch. And what I'm always trying to do is to create some ambiguity between where the sketch finishes and then what I do with the page in, in terms of text etc. So as you can see as I flip through these pages you'll um, see a lot of kind of vertical uh, design work as I tie sketches together with vertical text blocks and experiments with how to cross the spiral uh, and fit in the page. So on this particular occasion I tried to ignore it uh, and had a tree on both sides of the page. On the next day you'll see once again this obviously very clear vertical um, design with the spiral really separating the two pages as separate entities. And you'll also see a lot of foundations work as I go through this, because at the time, uh, February 2022, I'm actually going through with a group working through the course. Uh, and I think this page was quite significant because once again, this is something I was doing for my foundations course, but like I, I tried to I feel like I'm starting to scale down a little bit. And at the same time, I'm starting to really think about the fact that I really have to get the main message of my sketch, the focus of my sketch on one of these vertical pages and then just have some context or some supporting uh, areas um, bleeding over onto the next page. And if you can hear, I'm sorry about the cockatoo noises. <laughs> I always have birds around. Uh, bits and pieces, page, uh, trying to then, trying to have a horizontal element to contrast with the vertical. So horizontal versus verticals, a big thing. Uh, here we go, once again, main part of the sketch, kind of extending over. So giving that kind of horizontal feel to the sketch, but then contrasting it with some vertical elements. This is when I started to really get a feel for the sketchbook. So this is a couple of days in. Uh, this is the main part of the sketch, the, tr the picnic table and the tree. And then the other side. So even though this is a double page spread, I'm really trying to focus my attention on one side and then use this as supportive. supportive. So the idea that you're bringing the eye in and, and, and then moving around uh, this part of the sketch and this is actually something I talk about in another one of my courses watercolor on location a more intermediate course kind of talking about the idea of pathways through a sketch fill in sketches while I was waiting for my card to be serviced playing around with different layering and then contrasting that with my usual approach which is just to put some paint down very quickly and loosely and then put some line work. And as you can see, I'm always playing with text, uh, text blocks, headings, 
and the ambiguous nature of sketches kind of expanding out from a border. Once again, this vertical format, this is the day I filmed the previous video. And this is then more of these contained compositions, the thing I talk about in sketchbook design. So I put one thing, then the next, then the next, draw a border around it, put a text block. But I'm always trying to break out of that in a little bit. So here's just a couple of dispenser bottles of uh, a new product that I bought. Um, it's code for me of uh, what arrived in the mail that day. Uh, but you can see how I'm pulling it out uh, outside the text block. This is a very spontaneous sketch with my sister-in-law and the kids started here and worked my way across uh, so obviously this kind of reaches right to the top whether this was the best part of the scene to cross the spiral I, if I was to do it again I'd probably move it across a little bit so I get a bit more space around this and I probably squash this a little bit so this is one of the things about the spiral book is, is, you know, you really have to plan where the spiral is going to go and going to fit in with your sketch. And if you're working spontaneously, how you have to adjust it um, to avoid uh, an awkward junction. More bits and pieces, more vertical, more text play, play, uh, playing with. And I've got this new idea of when I have a smudge on the page to put a gold or silver dot more vertical, more blind contours during Zoom calls, more foundations exercises, and then once again, this is another technique that I use and talk about in my sketchbook design that I like contrasting white space with more painted space, so what I call positive versus negative. More vertical. And then again, and so these are also more things for foundations. This is more things for foundations. This is more things for foundations. Uh, and so are these, okay? So there's a lot of foundations work in this course. And so interesting, I find this is like four different elements, uh, very much borders, vertical, two different exercises. And then on this page, I've also got four sketches, but you can see how I'm changing the, the, the layout, putting my text in a very horizontal way, and then putting a border to tie the two um, together. A page that just didn't work, I wasn't in the mood for sketching, so I just left it as it was, but then I kind of wanted to draw your eye away from this page onto this one by going straight to the edge, putting a lot of colour. This was actually in the middle of uh, rain. There was drops on the pay page all throughout. I really need to paint the edge more. I really like it. An outing day, the first sketch I was able to just choose a portion of the building so that it's a vertical format. But then on the next one, so I think this one is a really important sketch in this sketchbook. You can see I'm, you know, two, the way, two thirds the way through the book. And I knew I was going to struggle to fit the uh, Sydney Opera House on the page at the time. I knew I, I wanted to make sure I, I positioned it close to the left edge, but obviously not too close or else it would feel too cramped. So I started here uh, and I was hoping I could get the whole of the all of the shells on before the spiral hit but I miscalculated. Now I'm not doing any measuring, I'm also not doing any um, quick pencil lines to adjust, I'm just going straight with um, this is actually some lime green uh, colour pencil but like I wasn't correcting it, whatever it was on the page was on the page so I just have to um, deal with this here going ideally that shell would have been just this side, I'm just out by a little bit. But then in the next sketch, I was able to uh, successfully fit the main part of the building on the page, and then it's just the supporting element come, comes across the spiral onto the next. Obviously maps, uh, and this was a big inflatable tiger for the uh, Lunar Festival. I actually stretched the body of the tiger so that the feet we're on this side of the page, so the feet should have probably been right in the middle of the spiral. So that is also another thing I really picked up on this day, is that idea of stretching part of a sketch to make sure I miss the spiral. More vertical everyday sketches, more Lane Cove sketches. Uh, this one is a fun one. Same thing about like the Sydney Opera House. I just uh, started um, thinking I would have enough room on the page to fit the teapot on, but I just 
um, miss the spiral but then it was positioned quite awkwardly on the page so I then did a second sketch and intentionally painted it over the spiral to balance the composition and make it look like this junction was more intentional. So that's really part of the fun with designing your pages is often things are awkward on the page and then how do you uh, design the rest of the spread so that it looks intentional. Another outing this time with Urban Sketches Sydney Cocteau Island. This was actually the first sketch that I did on the day and I completely miscalculated uh, when I put the first of these four beam benders. So these are things used um, to bend metal for ships in the in the day. So anyway, I made a complete mess of it, but that's fine. But it made me very much aware for the rest of the outing to think very carefully about how I was going to position a sketch to suit the spiral. So in this case, is the, this is the second sketch I did. I positioned the kind of featureless part of this scene over the spiral, so the bit that didn't have a door or anything else. Um, and so that quite successfully um, straddles the spiral. In this case, this is an opportunity when I was able to stretch this part of the building so that I could get uh, this whole gable end on this side of the page. So that was one of the things I did. I also, I'll just jump ahead. I also did the same approach here, trying to make sure that this and this component were uh, secure on the page and then the in-between connecting bits could cross the spiral. Uh, I'm always trying to draw a map when I have an outing. Uh, this is one of those cases where the placement was a little bit awkward. So I'm kind of experimenting with, you know, the text and running the lines all the way through to kind of tie everything together. So my lines I do with a fountain pen with turquoise ink. And the other thing too, when I'm uh, doing a big sketching day, so this was like one morning, um, quite a few sketches just in a couple of hours. I'm intentionally thinking about placement of the sketches on the page and where I might put text before I start so that I'm getting variety from one page to the next. Ah, one more sketch. <laughs> um, some measuring as part of foundations. And this is probably a case where I think that signage probably was more here. I just moved it so it suited the spiral. Uh, more of this vertical formatting again. So this is one of the things I kind of just learned to embrace. So I like more interesting, more variety in terms of layout. But, predict, but for this book, I realised, no, you know, there is a limited amount of things that I can do. So how can I play with this idea of more um, vertical, these kind of idea of one column, two columns on the page. And, and you'll, you'll see that, I, you know, as I work across the different days, they have a sameness about them, but then they're all slightly different. So that's that developing a theme and then varying it. Another double page spread down at Lane Cove, uh, even though it crosses uh, the spread and it's painted on both sides, you can see clearly this is more important and this is clearly uh, positioned on the page. Here's some of my measurements from those Cockatoo Island sketches. More foundations measuring as part of the lesson, more tea and coffee, <laughs> more Lane Cove once again. Focus on this side, uh, additional context on the other side, room for, for text. Uh, and that's um, interesting. By the time I got to this part of the sketchbook, I'm going, I'm really enjoying this. I really like it. Uh, it's going great. Uh, I, I can cope with it. Um, and I was coming to the end. So once again, that same same approach. A uh, couple of back pages that didn't fit in at the time. So this is part of my project to work through my teapots. And then the very last page, which I'm kind of happy to show you, I write more personal notes upside down. Uh, so it's kind of private, um, people would normally see it, but it's there. And then I also have a um, bit of plastic so that if I was um, sketching out on location, <laughs> well, I can't find an example, but um, you know, if I was sketching out on location, 
and I'd already done a page, I can um, use that to protect it or I could also use it the other way around as well. So I did this for the big spiral book and um, it helps a lot just protecting the other side if I bend the book back on itself to work out on location, which is something I like doing a lot. So there you have it. Um, another really fun book. I really like spiral books. Uh, the spiral is a pain to work through and uh, I'm definitely not going to make this a regular. I'm hanging out to get back to my normal 8x10 book I can tell you and to have more options but I don't know there's something nice about a spiral and it's been really nice to use it for something different and my intention was actually to go back to the 8x10 softcover alpha book but I decided while I'm in the spiral mood let's go one more book. So this is my current book it is the same size, so it's um, the 7 by 10, but landscape. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, what it's like to use this book and to have more width to work across and how that impacts the design of my pages uh, and also ease of just simply um, filling a book. So in summary, when sometimes you get start a book, doesn't seem to suit you you don't think it's going to work but over time you work out a way of dealing with its challenges and uh, it's definitely a worthwhile exercise to stick with a book and fill it up with sketches from your day because every page you fill is another part of your sketching journey anyway let me know in the questions below if you have any questions otherwise see you in the next video when I share the pages from this sketchbook. Bye!